Good evening, everyone. Today is day 30 of reading through the Bible in a year. We are coming to the end of January. We only have one more day, and that is tomorrow. And we would have been consistent every day in January to read our Bible, except with the exception of one, but we made it up the next day. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. I'll give you all a moment to come on in so we can get started. Those of you who are here with me daily, you all know the routine. Come in and say hello and hit that share button at the bottom of your screen. We want to get as many people um, joining our Bible reading as possible. All right, this is a beautiful way to increase, you know, just general biblical competence, understanding the narrative of the story, understanding where things are placed in the scriptures. Um, re reading through it. So when you go back, take time to study, hunt, underline, highlight, do all of those things. All right. Hello, Gwen. Hey, 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 I see Mark's in the room. I see Michelle's in the room. Uh, hey, Tanisha. Hello, Angie. Hello, Ishanti's in the room. I see Mianka's in the room. What up, Junior? Chris, I hope all is well. I hope I see you tomorrow in church. Hey, Michelle. Hello, Dominique. Hey, Mianka. Uh, hello, 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 Ishanti. All right, we're going to get started. I'm not going to belabor the time tonight. Still doing a little bit of work, uh, finishing touches on our message for tomorrow. It's going to be exciting. I'm ready to preach. Hey, Yolanda, I hope all is well. It's good to see you. Hey, Chantelle. Hello, hello, hello. All right. We're going to get it to our reading plan is in the title of this live. We have a fear not verse for each day of the year, 365 fear not. So why do we do that? Because what the Lord has called us to do will require us to be brave and bold. And wherever fear is creeping up, apply these scriptures, apply these verses to your life. And don't let fear have its way. Hey, Paulina, congratulations on completing the fast. I'm so proud of you. Hey, Vani, hope all is well. Hey, hey. All right. So our fear not verse for today comes out of the book of Job. And believe it or not, I'm not sure if you know it. Job is actually the oldest book in the Bible. Um, Job, the first chapter, beginning at the eighth verse. And we're going to read. It says, and the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. The biblical truth for this is God delights in his saints, those who love and honor him in worship. He is our defender against evil, uh, who despises those that are holy and upright. That is our fear not verse for today. We fear the Lord and wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All right. Let's go to our reading for today. We're going to go to the Old Testament. Turn with me to the book of Exodus, the 10th chapter. We're going to start at the first verse. Remember, make sure you have your note-taking devices. Make sure you're highlighting, underlining, putting question marks or whatever stands out to you in Scripture. And go back and read it after we're done. All right. Once you get there, I want you to just type, I am there. And give me some thumbs up. Also, for those of you who are watching the replay, just hashtag replay. We like to know who's with us. So at the end of the year, when we do our celebration, we make sure uh, we have everybody present. All right, Angie's there. Thank you for the thumbs up. Great, great, great. Michelle's there. Mark's there, my guy. Dominique's there. See the people coming on in the room. And Tanisha's there. Let's roll. Let's get going. 10th chapter of Exodus, starting at the first verse. Then the Lord said to Moses, return to Pharaoh and make your demands again. I have made him and his officials stubborn so I can display my, my miraculous sign among them. I've also done it so you can tell your children and grandchildren about how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and about the signs I displayed among them. And so you will know that I am the Lord. Hey, Christine. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. How long will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse to watch out, for tomorrow I will bring a swarm of locusts on your country. They will cover the land so that you won't be able to see the ground. They will devour what little is left of your crops after the hailstorm, including all these trees growing in the fields. They will overturn your palaces and the homes of your officials and all the houses of Egypt. Never in the history of Egypt have your ancestors seen a plague like this one. And with that, Moses turned and left Pharaoh. 
Pharaoh's officials now came to Pharaoh and appealed to him. How long will you let this man hold us hostage? Let the men go to worship the Lord, their God. Don't you realize that Egypt lies in ruins? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. All right, he told them, go and worship the Lord your God. But who exactly will be going with you? Moses replied, we all will go, young and old, our sons and daughters, and our flocks and herds must all join together in celebrating a festival to the Lord. Pharaoh retorted, the Lord will certainly need to be with you if I let you take your little ones. I can see through your evil plan. Never. Only the men may go and worship the Lord, since that is what you requested. And Pharaoh threw them out of the palace. And the Lord said to Moses, Raise your staff over the land of Egypt to bring on the locusts. Let them cover the land and devour every plant that survived the hailstorm. So Moses raised his staff over Egypt, and the Lord caused an east wind to blow over the land all that day and through the night. When morning arrived, the east wind had brought the locusts, and the locusts swarmed over the whole land of Egypt, settling in dense swarms from one end of the country to the other. It was the worst locust plague in Egyptian history, and there has never been another one like it. For the locusts covered the whole country and darkened the land. They devoured every plant in the field and all the fruit on the trees that had survived the hailstorm. Not a single leaf was left on the trees and plants throughout the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you, he confessed. Forgive my sin just this once and plead with your Lord, your God, to take away this death from me. So Moses left Pharaoh's court and pleaded with the Lord. And the Lord responded by shifting the wind and the strong west wind blew the locusts into the Red Sea. Not a single locust remained in all the land of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's hearts again, so he refused to let the people go. Then the Lord said to Moses, lift up your hand toward heaven and the land of Egypt will be covered with darkness so thick and so thick you can feel it. So Moses lifted his hands to the sky and deep darkness covered the entire land of Egypt for three days. During all that time, the people could not see each other and no, and no one moved, but there was light as, unusual, as usual where the people of Israel lived. That's powerful. Finally, Pharaoh called for Moses, go and worship the Lord, he said, but leave your flocks and herds here. You may take, every, you may take even your little ones with you. No, Moses said, you must provide us with animals for sacrifice and burnt offerings to the Lord our God. I like how Moses would not negotiate. He said, it is what it is. All our livestock must go with us too. Not a hoof can be left behind. We must choose our sacrifice for the Lord our God from among these animals. And we won't know how we are to worship the Lord until we get there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart one more time and he would not let them go. Get out of here. Pharaoh shouted at Moses, I'm warning you, never come back to see me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Very well, Moses replied, I will never see your face again. Ooh, that would have scared me if I was Pharaoh. After seeing all these things that uh, the Lord was doing through Moses. All right, the 11th chapter, let's go. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will strike Pharaoh in the land of Egypt with one more blow. After that, Pharaoh will let you leave this country. In fact, he will be so eager to get rid of you that he will force you to leave. Tell all the Israelite men and women to ask their Egyptian neighbors to, for articles of silver and gold. Now, the Lord had called the, caused the Egyptians to look favorable, favorably on the people of Israel. And Moses was considered a very great man in the land of Egypt, respected by Pharaoh's officials and the Egyptian people alike. Moses had announced to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says. At midnight, I will pass through the heart of Egypt. All the, firstborn, all the firstborn sons will die in every family in Egypt, from the oldest son of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the oldest son of his lowliest servant girl who grinds the flour. Even the firstborn of all livestock will die. Then a loud wail will rise throughout the land of Egypt, a wail like no one has heard before or will ever hear again. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful that not even one, not even a dog will bark. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. All the officials of Egypt will run to me and fall to the ground before me. Please leave, they will beg. Hurry and take all your followers with you. Only then will I go. Then burning with anger, Moses left Pharaoh. Now the Lord had told Moses earlier, 
Pharaoh will not listen to you, but then I will do even more mighty miracles in the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron performed these miracles in Pharaoh's presence, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he wouldn't let the Israelites leave the country. Chapter 12. While the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instructions to Moses and Aaron. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Announce to the whole con community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice, one animal for each household. Excuse me. If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. The animal you select must be a one-year-old male, either a sheep or a goat with no defects. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of this first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and tops of the doorframe of the house where they eat the animal. That same night, they must roast the meat over a fire and eat it along with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. Do not eat any of the meat raw or boiled in water. The whole animal, including the head, legs, and internal organs, must be roasted over a fire. Hello, Janine. Um, do not leave any of it until the next morning, but whatever, burn whatever is not eaten before the morning. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals, and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night... I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign, marking the house, houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. That's it for our reading in the book of Exodus tonight. We're going to go to New Testament now. Hallelujah. If you are with me, I want you to type I'm with you as you turn to Matthew, the 20th chapter. Hold on. I'll be right back. All right. We're going to get ready to read our New Testament scripture. It is Matthew, the 20th chapter. I got a few people with me. Great. All right, all right, all right. Got enough with, I'm with you. So let's start Matthew, the 20th chapter, beginning at the first verse. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, excuse me, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon and again, at three o'clock, he did the same thing. At five o'clock that afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening, he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them. Beginning with the last workers first, when those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive more, but they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only an hour, and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. I ain't front, I would have been tripping too. He answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? So those who are last now will be first then, and those who are first will be last. As Jesus was going to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen to him. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and to the teachers of religious law. They will sentence him to die. 
Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with the whip, and crucified. But on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. See, socialism isn't that bad. Everyone gets to say it. <laughs> ah, Jesus, they say Jesus was a socialist. Americans wouldn't like to hear that. All right. I probably shouldn't have said that on this live, but it is what it is. Um... Let's go to the 20th verse. Nope, the 17th verse. I'm sorry, 20th verse. Let's go. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, he asked. She replied, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit place in place of honor next to you, one at your right hand and the other on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I am about to drink? Oh yes, they replied, we are able. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. When 10 other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. But Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be, a, be first among you must be your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve those, but to serve others to give his life as a ransom for many. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, let's go to Psalm, the 25th division of Psalm. We're going to read 1 through 15. We're making good progress tonight. Everybody doing good on here tonight? If you're doing good, just say, I'm good. I want to make sure everybody's good and everybody's tracking. Great. Great, 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 great. All right. I'm glad everybody's doing good. I'm glad I see some thumbs up. I'm glad I'm seeing some hearts. Great, great, great. Hey, Tessa, hope all is well. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Auntie. All right. That's right. You got to serve in order to lead. Let's go. Psalm 25, beginning at the first verse. Oh, Lord, I give you my life to you. I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. But disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. Show me the right path, O oh Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me. Hallelujah. For you are the God who saves me. All day long I put my hope in you. Remember, O oh Lord, your compassion and unfailing love which you have shown from the long from long ages past. Do not remember the rebellious sins of my youth. Remember me in the light of your unfailing love, for you are merciful, O Lord. The Lord is good and does what is right. He shows the proper path to those who go astray. He leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his ways. And the Lord leads with unfailing love and unfaithfulness all who keep his covenant and obey his demands. Hallelujah. For the honor of your name, O Lord, forgive me, forgive my many, many sins. Who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path they should choose. They will live in prosperity and their children will inherit the land. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. He teaches them his covenant. My eyes have, are always on the Lord for he rescues me from the traps of my enemies. Hallelujah. All right. We are on the home in the home stretch. We are in Proverbs, the 30th chapter. And tomorrow we only have one more proverb left and we would have read through the entirety of Proverbs. All right, let's go. You all know that the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom with a lot of practical application knowledge, things that you can apply. And Proverbs is always fire. So let's go ahead and read. The saying of Ager, the son of Jacob, 
The Son of Jacquet contains this message. I am weary, O oh God. I am weary and worn out, O oh God. I am too stupid to be human, and I lack common sense. I have not mastered human wisdom, nor do I know the Holy One. But who, who but God goes up to heaven and come back down? Who holds the wind in his fist? Who wraps up the oceans in his cloak? Who has created his whole, the whole wide world? What is his name and his son's name? Tell me if you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. Do not add to his words or he may rebuke you and expose you as a liar. Oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. That's, a, that's huge. Second, give, give me neither poverty or riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? And I, if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. Never slander a worker to the employer, or the person will curse you and you will pay for it. Some people curse their father and do not think their mother. They are pure in their own eyes, but they are filthy and unwashed. They look proudly around, casting disdainful glances. They have teeth like swords and fangs like knives. They devour the poor from the earth and the needy from among humanity. The leech has two suckers that cry out more and more. There are three things that are never satisfied, nor four that ever say enough. The grave is never satisfied, a barren womb, a thirsty desert, and the blazing fire. The eye that mocks a father and despises a mother instructs, instructions will be plucked out by ravens on the valley and eaten by vultures. It's pretty violent. There are three things that amazes me. No, four things that I don't understand. How an eagle glides through the sky, how a snake slithers on the rock, how a ship navigates the ocean, and how a man loves a woman. An adulterous woman consumes a man, then swipes her mouth and says, what's wrong with that? There are three things that make the earth tremble. No, four, it cannot endure. A slave who becomes a king, an overbearing fool who prospers, a bitter woman who finally gets a husband, a servant girl who supplants her mistress. Wow. There are four things on the earth that are small but unusually wise. Ants, they are strong, but they store up food all summer. Hydraxes, they are powerful. They aren't powerful, but they make up their homes among the rocks. Locusts, they have no king, but they march in information. And lizards, they are easy to catch, but they are found even in king's palaces. There are three things that walk with safety stride. No, four that struts about. The lion, the king of the animals, who, who won't turn aside for anything. The strutting rooster, the male goat, and the king as he leads his army. If you have been a fool by being proud or plotting evil, cover your mouth in, in shame. As the beating of cream yields butter, and striking the nose causes bleeding, so stirring up anger causes quarrels. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word tonight. We have just completed day 30 of reading through the Bible in a year. We are on a good track to complete it. We might even be able to complete it a little early, which would be exciting. All right, y'all. I feel my help winding down. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you and may his peace rest on you heavy. May he even be the God of your night season and may he encounter you with dreams and visions. May you wake in the morning full of energy and strength to accomplish all that is set before you tomorrow. And may his peace be your portion. God bless you all. Have a good night. Glory House, I will see y'all at church tomorrow. God bless.